everyone, I'm Lynn and welcome to my channel. Today I'm continuing my MSC cruise journey to the Puerto Piraeus where we took a private tour to Athens. We arrived at 7.30 a.m. We didn't get to head out till 10. We have to return to the ship before 4. That leaves 6 hours to drive to Athens and explore. From the port, it takes 20 minutes to drive to the city of Athens. If you wanted to explore Athens on your own, it will take 1 hour by subway or 40 minutes by bus. I will probably take a taxi instead. It should cost about 9 euros each way. Once you somehow how get your way in Athens the city is really walkable all the popular sites are pretty close to one another because of that I felt like I could have explored Athens on my own and saved the money I'll let you judge your experience let me know in the comments below about your thoughts on this tour the tour cost 95 euros a person once we got off the ship our tour guide was nowhere to be found we waited almost 30 minutes for him to arrive then we found out that he was a replacement our original guy had to tend to his sick mother so he asked his friend to step in okay that that was fine let's get our day started our first stop was to acropolis i heard the line to get tickets to get inside is very long tickets for acropolis is 20 euros a person for us we didn't have to wait in any line at all i guess it was because our cruise was at the tail end of traveling season once you get in is a little hike up to the top of acropolis now on acropolis, acropolis. acropolis. and then we're climbing the 600 steps up to see the actual temple that was made for Adina. You can see there is a lot of people here. Everyone from the ship is here. Some people said it took them two hours to finally get inside. If the line is long, they also have another entrance in the south side that is away from the parking lot so it has fewer people. Located on the southwest slope of Acropolis is the stone theater built in 161 AD. This theater holds 5,000 people and was used for music concerts. It was destroyed by the Haruli army in 267 AD. In 1950, it was restored and still used today. This venue is used for the Athens Festival during May through October. In 1962, Frank Sinatra performed here. It's nice to know this ancient building is still being used today. Acropolis is an ancient citadel located on a hill overlooking the entire city of Athens. I don't know if it's just me, but when I hear citadel, I think of Game of Thrones and Samuel heading there to find a way to defeat the Nightwalkers. All right, back to reality. The most famous building in the citadel is the Parthenon. It is a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena. Construction began in 447 BC and it was finally completed in 438 BC. The Parthenon is regarded as one of the finest examples of Greek architecture. It symbolizes the power of ancient Greece after their Hellenic victory over the Persians. Although it's a temple, it wasn't really a place for worship. It's actually a place where the city's treasury is kept. Throughout its history, different rulers had different uses for it, like a Christian church as well as a mosque. This is a Greek temple on the north side of Acropolis dedicated to Athena and Poseidon. On the south side of the building is the famous Porch of the Maidens with six female figures as supporting columns. These are replicas. The five original columns are in the Acropolis Museum. The last one is in the British Museum in London. Although these figures are the same height and wearing the same clothing, they are not the same. Their faces, stand drapings, and hair are carved separately. Some are standing on the right knee while some are on the left knee. Such amazing small details were placed on this work of art. This theater was dedicated to Dionysus, the god of plays and wine. This is considered the birthplace of theater. It was the first ever built. It holds 17,000 people. This was the birthplace of Greek tragedies. You can actually walk down and go sit on the marble stones. This temple was built for the goddess of Dina Niki in 420 BC. During wars, people worshipped the goddess hoping for victory. The temple was demolished in 1686 by the Turks who used the stones to build defenses. In 1834, the temple was reconstructed after the independence of Greece. We spent a little over an hour here looking at all the buildings when in Greece, Gotta get some Fredo Espresso. Our tour guide treated us to some coffee. It made up for being late. He's forgiven now. This is more commonly known in Greek as Hadrian's Gate. It was built to celebrate the arrival of the Roman Emperor Hadrian. It's kind of like the Roman Triumphal Arches. It's made out of pentelic marble. This is the same marble used for the Parthenon. Our tour guide gave us such a good tip. He said, don't waste your money going into to see the Temple of Olympian as you can actually see it for free outside the gates. 
the entrance is 6 euros. Construction for this temple began in the 6th century BC and was completed in the 2nd century AD. But in less than a century later, it was destroyed during an invasion and was never fully brought back to its former glory. What's cool is 16 of the original columns are still standing till today. This multi-purpose stadium is huge. It is the only stadium in the world built entirely out of marble. It used to be built out of limestone. Marble was used in 14480. During that time, it held 50,000 people. In 1896, it was remodeled to hold 80,000 people. Today, it can only hold 45,000. This is the last venue in Greece from where the Olympic flame handover ceremony to the host nation takes place. I'm here visiting the White House of Greece, hmm, but I haven't even visited my own country's White House. It was built in 1897 for Prince Constantine I. This used to be the royal palace in town 1974 when monarchy was abolished. Now it is the official resident of the president of the Hellenic Republic. From here you can see the changing of the presidential guards. If you happen to be in Athens on Sunday at 11 a.m. in Sintema Square, also known as the Constitution Square, you can see the official changing of the guards there too. Kind of reminds me of changing of the guards at Buckingham Palace. Like the guards in London, they also can't make any facial or eye movement and must not show any expression. Each soldier guards for about one hour without any movement until they swap places with another guard. The steps that are required at the time of changing are carried out in really slow motion to protect their blood circulation after standing for so long. The white skirt of the uniform has 400 folds to represent 400 years of Ottoman occupation over the Greeks. In the winter, their uniforms are navy blue, and in the summer, they are light khaki. Their shoes are red leather clogs with black pom-pom. Depending on the size of the shoe, there are 60 to 120 nails. This makes the shoe about 3.5 pounds. Before the ceremony, you can walk up to them and take some pictures. But when the ceremony starts, you have to watch from across the street. It is a building in the National Gardens of Athens. It was built in 888 for meetings and ceremonies. It has 25 rooms. So there's nothing much here. You just kind of look at the building. Waterfalls really cool though. I feel like it's something you should see once and then you're done. This is Greece's National Academy and the highest research establishment in the country. It was established in 1926. The academy is divided into three orders, natural sciences, letters and arts, and moral and political sciences. During our visit, there was a large protest happening. That day, all the subways were down due to workers protesting. That's why our tour guide was late because there was extra traffic everywhere. Next stop, Plaka is an old historical neighborhood of Athens. It is known as the neighborhood of the gods because it's really close to Acropolis and archaeological sites. The entire area is close to cars. Paca has a village feel with narrow cobblestone streets lined with tiny shops selling jewelry, clothes, and local ceramics. Here's where you can shop for souvenirs and grab something to eat at a cafe. If you want some jewelry, you can buy handmade ones by an artist. I personally didn't find anything I liked, so I didn't end up buying anything at all. I did come across a honey shop and their honey was really good. They had so many different flavors that I normally don't see like red fur, so I got some to take home. This bar looks so cool from the outside, we had to go in and check it out. We tried a shot of ouzo, which is a dry anise flavored aperitif. It was strong, one shot was enough. We didn't eat anything in Plaka because it looked like a tourist trap. So we asked our tour guide to take us to some place he would recommend. So he took us here. It looked really nice from the outside, but after eating it, it wasn't good. It felt like another tourist trap because the food was super expensive and very mediocre. They charge you for bread and water even if you didn't ask for it. I wouldn't recommend this place at all. Salted cured roll mixed with olive oil, lemon juice, and a starchy base like bread or potato. It was a frozen fish so the meat is mushy. You would think you're right by the sea so the fish would be fresh. Nope! 
I had better seafood in Venice. Alright, after that sad meal, it was time to head back to the ship. Overall, I saw so many things today, I was exhausted. I think once I got back on the ship, I went to the spa and then fell asleep. I hope you liked my trip to Athens. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. I'm almost done with the cruise. Time sure flies by fast. Follow the link below to see all the places I went on this cruise. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll vlog you next time. Bye!